Okay, so um, hoping to rely on the wonders of technology again. Um, up next, we've got Chalice Mining Limited, Alex Dorsch, Managing Director. Um, caught up in the uh, WA border closures, Alex joins us for, virtually from the East Coast. I think it's um, Noosa, is what I'm led to believe. Alex uh, was appointed Managing Director of Chalice Mining in November 2018 and has led the company through an exceptional growth period following the Julemar discovery in early 2020. Alex has diverse experience in a variety of leadership roles across the resource sector as a management consultant, engineer, project manager, and corporate advisor. A graduate of the University of Adelaide, I believe Alex is a keen golfer, and uh, he tells me that he likes to hustle punters on the fairways of Perth. So, hope you're there, Alex, and uh, welcome to Diggers. Thanks, Paul. Um, yeah, no, great to uh, present again at this, uh, this great mining forum. Um, so, thanks to the organisers of Diggers and Dealers once again for hosting us. Uh, I'll be presenting on Chalice, uh, obviously another spectacular year for, for Chalice um, with our uh, Julema PGE Nickel Copper Cobalt Gold Discovery in, uh, in Western Australia. So uh, our usual forward-looking um, statements, disclosures available on the next slide, uh, we'll be able to read that in our own time. Uh, so as most uh, people will be aware, uh, Chalice is, a, is an exploration specialist with a globally significant uh, discovery in Western Australia. Um, so Julemar really sort of took the, the headlines and stole the headlines during the, uh, the COVID uh, pandemic uh, in March last year. Uh, and what we found is, uh, is a shallow, high-grade PGE nickel, copper, cobalt, gold discovery. Uh, it's Australia's first major palladium discovery. Really, there's, there's no other material PGE deposits in Australia. So it's quite a, an eye-catching uh, one for the industry. Um, but it, it, it hosts a material quantum of uh, nickel, copper, cobalt, as well to a lesser extent, uh, platinum and gold as well. So it is a true polymetallic uh, deposit um, that's shaping up as a world-class strategic deposit of the critical green metals, those metals that everyone's talking about at the moment um, to really transition our energy system uh, and decarbonise the global economy. Uh, and to top that all off, it's uh, just on the outskirts of Earth. Uh, in the world's best mining jurisdiction, Western Australia. Um, so with the nickel, copper, cobalt content, we're highly leveraged to the battery uh, and, and electric vehicle adoption uh, thematic, uh, but also the, the one emerging on the horizon, hydrogen. Um, the PGEs especially have a, a very meaningful role to play in hydrogen production uh, through the electrolysis of water uh, and the production of green hydrogen, but also the actual storage, transportation, and, uh, and use of hydrogen in fuel cells. Uh, and I should mention also nickel there is, uh, is no doubt going to play a key role uh, given the uh, stainless steels that are required for storing and transporting hydrogen. Um, we recently released uh, an intention to demerge our gold portfolio. There has been some strong interest in our gold assets uh, centred around our 5,000 square kilometre land holding in Victoria. Uh, we've made several uh, you know, new high-grade intersections there recently. Um, got some fantastic prospects, so we're looking to put that in a standalone ASX-listed vehicle towards the end of this year. Uh, so one to watch uh, in the latter part of 2021. Uh, the Chalice team is is well funded, um, a high-performance team um, with an excellent track record. Um, I think most in the industry would be aware of uh, Chalice and its credentials. You know, we've got a proven ability to not only find them but really delineate and define mining operations. Uh, over 116 million in cash and investments as of the last quarter, uh, and it's been a spectacular journey for shareholders. As I mentioned, over 4,000% TSR since the uh, Jewel Lamar discovery. Um, the next slide shows the, uh, you know, the, the green metals credentials of our deposit. So palladium, um, probably you know the the, the underweight uh, or, or underemphasised champion in uh, in climate change. It does a lot of the heavy lifting in taking out a very potent greenhouse gas out of uh, exhaust emissions uh, currently and, and really catalytic converters in internal combustion engines have been palladium dominant for many years just because of that ability to strip out nitrous oxides, which, are, which as I said, are very potent greenhouse gases. Uh, but it is a very tight market and dominated by one uh, jurisdiction, and that's Russia. Nickel, copper, they go without saying, they are immensely important for, for you know, um, clean energy technologies. And, and platinum is emerging as sort of the favoured catalyst at the moment. 
for use in fuel cells uh, and also production of green hydrogen. Uh, again, a very challenged, uh, you know, supply thematic there, uh, given that uh, you know the majority of platinum is produced uh, comes out of South Africa. So having a, an Australian deposit is significant um, for you know the nation uh, and certainly for the industry. Uh, on the next slide uh, illustrates, I guess, the journey we've been on since the Jewel Mar discovery. As I said, over four thousand percent total shareholder return uh, since that discovery in March last year. Uh, it was a shallow, high-grade discovery, as no doubt all, all would remember. Um, we confirmed that with about five drill holes surrounding the discovery hole uh, and then raised $30 million in May last year at $1.05. Uh, and then we really started to show the upside uh, going into the state forest area there to the north uh, in September uh, and then raised, uh, raised further $115 million at $3.75 towards the end of last year. Uh, we've subsequently been added into the ASX 300, followed by ASX 200 within the last six months, which has been a, a fantastic run. Uh, and uh, we're not uh, we're not done yet. We see, still a huge amount of upside uh, to our uh, to our discovery and new problems uh, that we've found. Uh, so the next slide has uh, some, some nice pictures of core uh, from our our discovery. Uh, no doubt, uh, yeah, happy viewing for, for many in the audience there. Uh, so the next slide is, uh, you know, our, our discovery, as no doubt um, people are aware, is just on the outskirts of Perth, about 70 kilometres away from the CBD as the crow flies. Uh, we staked this area in early 2018 and made a first hole discovery. Uh, and what made that even more important was that you know, there was fresh, high-grade nickel copper PG sulphides, uh, you know, basically near surface. Um, the first discovery is called Gonville. Uh, it's located at the southern tip of a greater than 26 kilometre long intrusive complex called the Jewel Mark Complex. It's basically undrilled. Uh, so that's where the, the upside uh, here is, is significant. We only drilled at Gonville really because that's the place we could get access uh, to the, the intrusive complex. So the 24 kilometres of, of undrilled strike length in the Jewel Mark State Forest are, are still yet to be drilled, uh, but we're hoping to change that uh, later this quarter. We've actually purchased uh, the farms uh, that host the discovery and the deposit at Gonville as well, over 21 uh, square kilometres of, of farmland now in Chalice's hands. Uh, and on top of that, 8,000 square kilometres of regional licence holding uh, surrounding Julema and within our new West Yulgar Nickel Copper PG province. So for anyone doubting uh, whether we've found a new province, uh, you can see the, the quantum of, uh, of, of juniors uh, in the area coming up with uh, sniffs of mineralisation sort of in the Julema locality and uh, and we're getting indications all the way up almost into the Pilbara um, that, uh, that this western part of the Yulgarn Craton is live and perspective for also magmatic nickel copper PGE deposits uh, like Julema. Um, so being in a favourable location, it gives us great access to infrastructure, major highway, rail, power um, and, you know, a very large and very capable workforce there in Perth. Um, so it's quite amazing that uh, in 2021, this, this part of the world is still sparsely unexplored, uh, and we're hoping to change that over the course of the next uh, year or two. Uh, in terms of our, uh, our focus on the environment and community, on the next slide, uh, you can see in terms of the, the mining operations that are, that are in and around state forest areas in that southwest part of WA are significant. Um, you know, Boddington, Alcoa, uh, Worsley, Green Bushes, all in a proximal, all within the state forest area. So it's a well trodden path um, for the state to approve mining activities in and around state forest. Um, we've got a proactive approach. We're doing the right things in terms of uh, environmental baselining work. Um, we've done some flora, flora, fauna uh, dieback surveys already within the within our exploration corridor in the Bulamar State Forest, and we've got low impact drilling techniques with small track-mounted diamond rigs that can navigate around the vegetation uh, within the Julemar State Forest. We're already using a number of those on private farmland, and that's what we've proposed to use for the first pass of drilling in that, uh, at that Hartog target, which, as I said, should, have, should uh, start later this quarter. Um, our, our communities in the local area, we've put in uh, you know, great work with those uh, local communities and the key stakeholders there. Uh, we've got a, a significant employment opportunity, obviously, down the track for a drive-in, drive-out workforce. 
um, we've got you know an active and open um, communication pro, um, you know approach with the local community, uh, and we're growing our community funding with the right causes and uh, obviously demonstrate commitment to uh, in line with uh, Chalice's values. So on the uh, the discovery of our new uh, our new district here. Um, you can see the, the, the exceptional Donville discovery at the bottom left-hand side of that page uh, is just the first one that we'll make in this belt. Um, Gonville already has 500 drill holes in it over about 1.8 kilometres of strike length. It's open to the north, it goes without saying, and certainly uh, you know, it, it, it is a standalone deposit and world-class deposit in its own right. Uh, it's basically sticking out of the ground at the southern end uh, and there's at least 12 high-grade zones within it. Uh, Ten of those still remain open after a, after a concerted 135,000 metres of drilling. We're still yet to close off those high-grade zones. Uh, we'll be able to demonstrate you know, where it stands in the, in the global rankings in terms of palladium endowment, but also nickel and copper endowment uh, in October this year when we come out with the maiden course for Gonville. So Hartog, the first of the targets, you know, in that state forest area, no drill holes as yet, about 70 drill holes planned as a first pass in uh, starting later this quarter, uh, subject to our approval, which we, which we anticipate is on track and, and, and coming next uh, month or two. Now then the, uh, the other regional targets there, Bodar and Jans, we continue to do some moving loop around EM work on those targets. Uh, very exciting to see, obviously, you know, um, soil anomalies, and EM targets there, you know, some 10 and 18 kilometres away from our discovery. So the next slide obviously summarises the, the intrusion, some of the recent drill holes, uh, some of the recent results in our 12 high-grade zones. Uh, I mentioned 10 of those remain open, uh, and also we've got a, over 100 high-grade intersections that basically uh, need further drilling really to establish what zones they, uh, they correspond to. Um, those who have, have been following the, the discovery will know that it's not just high-grade mineralisation in this deposit. It's really a continuum of grade. The high-grade lenses are surrounded by disseminated sulphide mineralisation, you know, that's grading anywhere from half a gram to two grams per tonne, PGEs. Uh, and then sitting above fresh rock, you've got a 20 to 40 metre thick oxide layer, which, again, is, is, is very well endowed and very enriched in palladium particularly. Um, so 500 drill holes, as I mentioned, 136,000 odd metres uh, of the 160,000 metre um, first pass resource drilling program. I say first pass really because we're, we're only constraining to the, the shallow parts of the system. We will continue to drill this for, for many years ahead, no doubt, to extend it you know, beyond the 500 metres that we find at the moment. So some of the highlight uh, intersections there recently, you know, 15.4 metres and 7 grams palladium. 1.3 grams platinum, 0.6% nickel, 0.3% copper in our G2 zone. A, a new zone emerging there underneath the G8 zone with 9 metres of 3.6 grams palladium, 1.7% nickel and 0.7% uh, copper. Uh, you can see all of the zones, they strike in the same orientation in that northeast direction. Uh, we, we've got the makings of a, of a very significant deposit here and, and, as I said, yet to close off those, uh, those, those high-grade zones. Uh, the next slide looks at uh, the, those zones in, in three dimensions over that 1.8 kilometres of strike length. You can see four of them, at least four of them, are open to the north into that Julemar State Forest on the right-hand side of the page. Our new 12th high-grade zone, G12, they're defined at the top of the page. What, what's significant about that G12 zone is that as we continue to drill to the northwest, sort of to the top of the page there, we keep finding stacked lenses and repeats of those lenses towards the northwest, and that's important because, as as we know from the from a couple of slides ago, there that the Hartog target lies immediately within that uh, Julemar State Forest. So we anticipate that that's what uh, we're likely to see is continued stacked lenses as we go to the northwest, and obviously, you know, we continue to find the strike extensions to the northeast of uh, of many of those zones shown there. So you can see that strike extent and the dip extent of some of those zones, they, they are significant in their deposits in their own right. Um, the, the red zones, obviously those that are palladium, nickel, copper, cobalt rich, uh, and orange uh, zones there are the, are the copper rich zones. Um, you know, a, a reasonably good, uh, you know, recent intercept there, 12 metres of 5 grams palladium, 
0.5 copper in that G11 zone. So it demonstrates that there are some quite rich uh, copper uh, zones of mineralization in our deposit as well. The next slide just shows some of the cross sections through, and you can see that uh, as you go from the top left, the southern end of Donville down to the northern end of Donville, the bottom right, you can see really that the drilling at the northern end of the bottom two cross sections is very limited. Um, those drill holes are really only you know, down to 250. We expect that those high grade lenses plunge underneath those holes. So expect to see a continuation of G1 through G9 there. They're plunging effectively below uh, the limit of RC drilling at that end. Uh, and importantly, the, the zones are hanging together very nicely. It's a very robust uh, geological model and interpretation we've got, and it's a it's a very robust deposit. It's going to be amenable to uh, the very simple uh, open cut mining techniques. The uh, the next slide, uh, you know, shows the uh, the gravity image over the Julemar State Forest and then the Julemar Complex uh, on the left hand side and on the right hand side, the airborne EM image with uh, soil anomalies marked. Uh, you can see the gravity points to you know, this coherent, continuous, you know, mafic, ultramafic package, uh, of which Gonville is just sort of on the margins of, on the southern end, got at least a 10 kilometre continuous package there uh, from that gravity image. Uh, and Hartog, you know, being a, a significant, uh, you know, dense accumulation of rocks there, interpreted to be potentially the feeder for the, uh, for the system. Uh, and then on the right-hand side, you can see that there's some quite coherent nickel-copper soil anomalies as well as at times palladium soil anomalies, you know, continuing you know, up to sort of 25 kilometres away from Donville. So there's a lot of work ongoing there at Bodar, Jans. Uh, there are some, there is the ability to access those, some of the areas there uh, on from private farmland and, uh, and that work is uh, continuing. Uh, but really the, the focus is on drilling Hartog there in the third quarter of this year. Uh, and, and as I said, uh, that is certainly one to watch. On the, uh, on the next slide, the, uh, the metallurgical test work we've done to date really demonstrates that, you know, the high-grade mineralisation we found will be amenable to, you know, sequential flotation and a fairly conventional flow sheet. We, we are fortunate that, you know, the majority of the PGEs report to a copper concentrate we're able to float that copper PG gold concentrate off very readily and achieve uh, very good metal recoveries and, and upgrade uh, into copper con. Nickel PG concentrate floats next and we, we're able to get uh, a good quantity of that uh, nickel uh, and about uh, a quarter of the, the PGs going into that nickel concentrate. We've had very good conversations with um, prospective uh, customers for those two products uh, already uh, and, uh, and what was importantly we're seeing low levels of deleterious elements, which uh, you know, means that penalties and deductions is likely to be minimal and, uh, and terms are likely to be very attractive. Uh, we also got some work underway on that oxide zone as well. The oxide is, is almost like a deposit in its own right and a project in its own right. Um, so there's there's uh, some effort going into there to work out the, uh, the leach flow sheet and process that. Uh, so the timeline on the next slide, uh, I guess, you know, the, the key milestones coming up is obviously access to the state forest, anticipating getting approval there in September, uh, drilling uh, at at least uh, two or three of these small diamond rigs. We've got Donville, we'll move those diamond rigs into the forest in September, start drilling at Hartog. There are a number of uh, drill sites we can drill on existing tracks within the forest, so that bodes well to uh, keep our disturbance to a minimum. Uh, and drilling, as it, as it shows you there, RC and diamond drilling uh, for resources, you know, continue until the middle of Q4, uh, when, at which point we'll start doing some geotech, some net drilling with the diamond rigs, um, and obviously ongoing metallurgical test work and variability analysis there. Uh, and uh, as, it, as it shows there, October, um, we are going to be reporting the maiden resource for Donville, and, and no doubt soon enough we'll be working on the second iteration given uh, you know, drilling will, will continue um, over that quarter. Uh, scoping study is well underway. We are targeting first half of next year to, uh, to that. Um, so what's most exciting, I think, in the pipeline on the next slide shows you the, the, the sort of scale and the potential of this new province, uh, which we think is, you know, 200 kilometres along that margin of the Yilgarn Craton not just obviously chalice you know vying for, for the next round of discoveries there 
but we are certainly sitting on the lion's share and consider the most prospective parts of that this new province. The you know, Praton margins are well known to host the you know the giant also magmatic nickel copper PGE systems, and that's certainly what uh, Julemar is shaping up to be. So we expect that you know there's there's out of the hundreds of prospective intrusions we've interpreted along there, you know the vast majority are completely undrilled. So we suspect there will be more major discoveries coming from this province over the, over the next few years. We are already seeing evidence of nickel copper PG soil anomalies some 300 kilometres to the north of Bulma around Barra Barra. So that speaks to the, I guess, the, how exciting this, uh, this province is for, from an exploration sense and certainly lots of work to do over the next few years. So. In summary, on the on the next slide, uh, I guess you know our, our Julemar discovery is, is shaping up, as I said, a, as a world class strategic deposit of, of critical minerals. Um, we have a huge amount of exploration upside in our portfolio, so not just within the Julemar complex, but within that that wider West Yulgarn nickel copper PG province, which, as I said, is almost completely unexplored. Um, we've got a, a you know a major discovery, the province to go with it, uh, a good balance sheet. Uh, so and an excellent track record. So um, an exciting year ahead for Chalice and uh, and shareholders. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Alex. Uh, we have a text question come in from uh, Des Moriarty, who is in Adelaide, and, and Des asks, says, thanks for the presentation. Given the Tier 1 status, I presume he meets jurisdiction here, uh, given the Tier 1 status, have you seen international interest in the deposit? If so, please elaborate. Yeah, look, suffice to say there's, there's a huge amount of interest uh, in our discovery. I guess, you know, that, that emanated from right from the first full hole we put in the project. That, uh, that discovery hole all the way back in March of 2020. Um, the, the, I guess the, the inbounds we've had so far are, are obviously very much appreciated. We're getting inbounds from all over the planet, um, you know, not just from the sort of usual suspects uh, in, uh, in Perth. Um, but, yeah, we're getting, we're getting uh, you know, a lot of corporate interest. Uh, and for the time being, obviously, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's pleasing to see. Um, but we have a we have a job to do really to to work out what we're sitting on in terms of the scale of of Julemar and the system itself. So we intend to sort of keep the head down and uh, you know keep drilling holes, keep demonstrating that uh, you know the, the world class nature of our discovery, uh, and uh, and certainly uh, don't want to get distracted with uh, with too many uh, corporate uh, engagements or anything like that. Great, thanks very much, Alex. Do we have any other questions from the room today? I presume we've got the capability of asking. Um, no, okay, well, we'll leave it there. Alex, thank you very much. We hope to see you back in WA soon, and all the best. Thanks, Please Paul. thank Alex, guys.